What's up everyone? Welcome to the bar in the basement at the Durbin Compound. So if you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin and uh, I like to do a lot of stuff on my own, do-it-yourself stuff and um, stuff exactly like this. So everything you see here um, was uh, built by me um, other than the bar stools um, and the cabinets here behind me, everything was built in and put together by me. So um, a little bit of creativity went into this basement bar. Um, in this video, I wanted to go over a couple features and, and uh, those of you who have seen it on Instagram um, and, and me taking pictures of, of cool little um, angles and stuff like that being created with the bar. Um, I wanted to give you a down and dirty of just all the little, all the little things that you don't see unless you're actually here um, for a party or something like that. So when I first bought this house, uh, this basement was unfinished. So what I might do is roll in, um, well, what I'm actually going to do is roll in a lot of pictures because um, I didn't, I wasn't recording on YouTube when I was actually building the bar. So I'm going to roll in a lot of uh, pictures over top of, of the video here so that you can see different phases and how the bar went. Um, I had originally wanted to do um, a different shaped bar, um, but this ended up being, uh, being good for the space and I just decided to keep it. So down here is about 350 square feet um, in this area, um, maybe, maybe up to close to 500. Um, so the, the camera is actually sitting on a, uh, a, a dining room table that's uh, in the middle in between the theater room and the bar area. So you're kind of um, not even midway into the next room. So um, the rest of the basement, this is a full finished basement now, um, and it is about uh, 1,200 square feet as a finished basement. So I think it's at like 1170 if you want to get technical with it. So this shares a, about just one corner of the actual basement. Um, this bar was a design that, that I came up with that I decided I wanted to go with. Um, I, I ended up going a little, a little wild on the design. Um, what I did was I, I kind of just taped it out on the floor exactly what I wanted it to look like. And then uh, me and my dad just started slapping stuff together um, the frame is actually built out of two by sixes and it has multiple um, stanchions. My, my original plan was to be able to have a keg rater inside the bar and be able to have taps here so that you could, you know, maybe a tap here or a tap here. Um, I had a couple different ideas, but in the end of it, um, a keg rater is like 28 inches deep. So if you can, if you can tell on the video, this is about 28 inches deep, this entire bar. So um, from, from um, the inside here to the outside, just wasn't enough room to make my dreams come true. And then I was thought, thinking about a bottle cooler, one of those, you know, the, the refrigerators that are long and you have the bottle cooler and it opens at the top. That was also too deep for me too. So my design really didn't support any appliances. So I kind of had to scrap that idea um, but I just kind of rolled with the punches on it. I really didn't think about anything. I didn't overthink anything. I just put it together um, and made it happen and, and rolled with it. So what I'll do is explain a couple things. Um, I put in, we'll, we'll bring the camera around here in a minute. I put cabinets underneath. Um, I put full wiring. Uh, things that you can see from your side. These, these uh, bar stools are uh, from a place called Scioto Valley. Um, here, uh, well, in Columbus, Ohio, it's about an hour from where I live. So I bought these bar stools. Um, if I can find a link to the bar stools, if you really like the bar stools or kind of that um, that vintage industrial look, I'll put a link to the bar stools in the in the description below so you can check those out. So other things that you can see is all my trim boards are actual rough cut cedar from Menards. So if you go into Menards, um, they do sell rough cut cedar. Uh, what I did was basically just uh, just trim them together, put them on the outside, and then I went through with a, a, a propane torch, just a handheld propane torch, and burnt the trim. And so as I went through and just get a little creative with it, burn the trim, and then all I did was coat it with a spar varnish. So a clear spar varnish, I sprayed it with a paint sprayer, and that's what got my um, dark, deep look like that, but also looking um, like industrial. So the metal on the front of the bar and on the back of the bar, it is actually a corrugated metal that's weathered and you can buy it straight from Lowe's or Home Depot. So you just have to source it. Um, they can order it for you. So you can get uh, corrugated weathered, um, you know, like basically barn siding is what I used. 
and then legitimately just put it up around my frame and that's what it looks like and I trimmed it out with that rough cut cedar. So um, the actual lights I have down here are just some industrial um, looking lights. I got these off Amazon. They were like 40 bucks a piece um, and I bought four of them and hung them above the bar and literally just put an outlet above where I wanted and um, dropped the wire down so that I could hang them how I wanted to. Um, these cabinets behind me are Ikea cabinets. Um, Ikea cabinets, if I, if I had to go back and do it all over again, I wouldn't buy Ikea cabinets because um, they're based on um, a you know metric system and so they're not wide enough to catch the 16 on center studs. So in the back of the cabinets, I had to mount outwards on both of them in order to catch the 16 on center studs. So mounting them was a little crazy. Uh, but so if I had to go back, I would do a regular cabinet from Home Depot or Lowe's and put my own glass uh, front on them. So I did the tinted, the tinted glass on the front. Um, these cabinets hold all of my, all of my glassware. So you can see here they have, they have soft closed doors. Um, if I had to go back, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't get IKEA cabinets. Um, like I said, I would just source a regular cabinet. Um, my liquor shelves are legitimately just a, a round a table piece from Menard, so you can get the round table pieces. Um, as, we, as we move around, I'll, I'll show you more in detail, um, and I, I cut them in half and all that stuff. Um, I actually built the top of the bar out of, I know I'm like all over the place with this video, I'm just like so excited, like I'm just talking. Um, I built the actual frame of this out of two by sixes, and I made risers for the top piece. The top piece is actually two 2x12s next to each other, and they're sandwiched in between two sheets of plywood. So if you can imagine, plywood sheet, and then two 2x12s laying next to each other, and then sheet of plywood on top. So it came in two sections. I did an eight foot section here, and then I made this crooked section, and then I basically had the end of the 2x12 come out, and then I had the sandwich from the other side, the two pieces of plywood come over and then screwed it in. So this is completely 100% solid as a rock. Um, you don't have to worry about it. Um, you can, heck, you can get up on here and you can dance around like Coyote Ugly, right? So it's 100% solid. Um, the way I designed it um, was was just for that fact, so that you know if. If you were hanging on it, if we had multiple people, you, it was never going to be a flexibility, um, you know, issue where it was going to break off or something stupid was going to happen. So I wanted you to be able to dance on it if you wanted to. Um, I finished the top of it in in regular uh, uh, tile from uh, I think I got it from Menards, maybe from Home Depot. It's a wood grain tile, um, and I just went through and, and finished it with a, a dark tile and some charcoal black um, grout. So that's basically what you can see from there. Now we're gonna move the camera over here. Um, the, whole, the whole theme behind this was rustic, industrial. Um, I wanted it more tavern-like, so that's why it's a little darker in here. Um, I could ramp up the lights and then it's all washed out and it doesn't look um, true, to, true to form. Um, I think I have some good pictures of the basement area on, uh, on Facebook. I definitely have a lot of good pictures on Instagram. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at ddurb, so D-D-U-R-B. Um, you can see a lot of pictures of the basement um, through through my Instagram of in-process pictures, but I'll roll them in as, as I talk about it. So let's move the camera. I'll bring you around here and I'll show you the back of the bar. All right, so now that I've brought you around to the back of the bar, you can see a little bit of um, what I had done behind here. Um, I literally just put a mini fridge in here for cold beers um, just to have them on tap. Um, I have a large full-size refrigerator that is right over by the dining table where you guys were before. Um, so we have a lot of beer on tap and that usually stays stays full. Um, I also did IKEA cabinets behind the bar. So I have uh, party accessories, anything for, for drinks and bowls and shakers and, and stuff like that. Um, big fan of IKEA cabinets because of their custom a customizability, customizability, custom, customability, <laughs> whatever. Um, I don't know why I can't why I can't think of what that word is. 
Um, they're very customizable. There they are. Woo! All right. That was close. All right. So that's why I like IKEA cabinets and their, their uh, quick or soft close option is sweet. Uh, I just kind of put my trash cans back here. Really hadn't thought about doing more. Um, I have my receiver down here for my outdoor speakers and my indoor speakers. So I have a full stereo system here in the bar. Um, I have Kel AH loudspeakers in the ceiling. Um, you can't see them because my, I painted my ceiling black. Um, soon I'll do a video on explaining how I did the industrial black ceiling. But for the most part, I just took a paint sprayer and, and sprayed the ceiling black. Um, there's 20 gallons of paint on the ceiling here in the basement. So kettle black, Valspar, storm coat. I just took it in the five gallon buckets and sprayed it on the ceiling. So there's a lot of paint on the ceilings. Um, so I have my speakers up in there. You can't see them, they blend in. But I have my receiver here so I can control it with my Sonus. So I have a Sonus Connect, which basically connects the, if you don't know about Sonus, they're Wi-Fi speakers. So I can control them directly from my phone. So I just, um, like li we're listening to uh, Led Zeppelin right now and I can turn it up. And when, I, when I'm over it, I can turn it down. So um, that's kind of how that works. And I can turn on the speakers outside. Um, and then I have my outdoor entertainment speakers on or off. Um, and then I also have a volume control in here so you can turn it up or down, um, depending on if people outside want to listen to it louder and not everybody in here, want, they want to watch a game on the TVs. Um, right behind the camera right now I have a 47 inch uh, flat screen on the wall so that people can watch TV at the bar um, and then the theater room is on past so um, you know basically that's that um, I took the corrugated so if anybody is curious this corrugated pipe right here um, looks like a pipe this is my radon system so if you don't know anything about radon it's a it's a tasteless odorless gas that um, basically comes from the ground and if you have a radon problem in your basement then you have to mitigate it. So it's basically a screen underneath the concrete slab that pulls all the air up and it, it's basically a PVC pipe. So the PVC pipe comes out of the floor and then out the wall and the fan draws the air up and, and ex, uh, expels it above the, uh, the roof line. So that radon system it had to be hidden because it was this gargantuan, you know, six inch round PVC pipe that came up out of the floor. So I put corrugated steel around it just so that um, it was hidden from view. Um, but yeah, that's that. All right, I know I said I would talk about my liquor shelves. So these liquor shelves are legitimately just a, uh, a big table piece that you buy at Menards um, that comes in a full circle and pre-rounded pre like this all the way around. All I did was mark it perfectly to cut it into four equal pieces. So I still have two pieces left over. Um, so this is a total of, of two tables, um, two table tops. All I did was go over it with the, with the propane torch and burn it in certain areas to make it look darker and then uh, coat it with spar varnish. Um, I used railroad spikes. I just drilled a hole through a railroad spike and put it into the stud with a, uh, with a lag bolt that I painted black. And boom, that's all she wrote. Just something cool um, to hold your liquor bottles. Uh, and, and you know, otherwise you could do it for all kinds of decorating purposes. So all of the trim in here other than these are, are rough cut cedar, um, like I said before, and they're just coated with a regular spar varnish. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Okay, so here's the other side. Um, you can see the railroad spikes a lot better on this side. Um, just a view of the other shelves. Um, like I said before, these these cabinets are just to hold all my glassware, so um, have little glass shelves and then um, easy close um, doors on them. And that that mirror that mirrored uh, or that tinted glass is really cool. Sets it off pretty well. Um, originally, I had my speakers up on top of the cabinets, and uh, they kind of sounded like crap, so I had to put them up in the ceiling. Um, these fixtures above me that light this area, um, I think I got them at Ikea too, so um, there's just tons of different options. You can use whatever lights you want, you can use whatever materials you want, um, you just be creative. Um, so um, what should we roll on to next? I don't know.
All right, so now you guys are up on the stairs, um, looking down. Uh, my, my stairs kind of come down to from the uh, left side of the screen there, and then you're on a little platform where it has two more stairs into the basement. Um, so uh, basically what I wanted to show you from this angle, is to show you as well as I can, is that I put a nice footrest in here made out of a one inch black iron pipe, and I just flanged it to the floor. So have my flanges um, and put uh, drilled, drilled holes into the floor and put the uh, rubber anchors in and then put drywall screws in because I wanted them to be black instead of blue tap cons. So one inch bar up across here just used some T fittings. Um, made it look really rustic and industrial for people to put their feet on. Um, if you want to stand at the bar it's also a good height for you to for you to kick your foot up on if you're not using a uh, one of these stools. So there's that. All right, guys. So that's a quick down and dirty tour of the of the basement bar here at the Durbin compound. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you there's Rambo barking at something, probably a bird or another cat. Who knows? Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions or or um, ideas or, or anything like that to uh, to go with the bar, I plan on getting a popcorn maker, um, some just cool stuff. If you got any comments. Uh, go ahead and put them below. Um, as you can see, the TV behind me, so where you guys were before, now you can see the TV. Um, so this is basically how you would see the bar when you come down the steps. Like, hey, 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 how's it going? What's up? I see you, you know, um, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. So if you got any other questions, shoot them my way. Um, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'll try to link a lot of the products and stuff like that. What's up, Rambo? What are you doing? You being crazy? So I'll try to link a lot of the products and stuff. Um, everything that I can, I'll link it in the uh, description below. Um, if you like my content, go ahead and hit subscribe. Um, love to have you around the Durbin compound. Um, stay tuned and uh, I'll see you guys next video.